the rumor mill is giving us increasingly higher TDP values for the next-gen GPUs, especially Nvidia's upcoming Ada Lovelace-based RTX 4000 series. What started out at over 400 watts in summer of last year quickly became up to 600 watts this spring and now has turned into 800 watts. The next logical step would be a 1000 watt GPU leak right before launch. But are these numbers even realistic? I briefly touched on the issue in my previous Lovelace video, but with the recent increase in rumors and TDP values alike, I think this topic deserves another look. So that's what we are going to do in this video. I will explain the difference between TDP and board or graphics power, talk about how much energy current GPUs are even using, why next-gen cards most likely will see a hefty increase in power consumption, and what TDP values we can actually expect for Nvidia's RTX 4000 GPUs. Just comparing the different WWCF tech articles I just showed you is a great way to explain one of the main issues with the power consumption rumors, because the numbers they tell you are not always equal. Sometimes they talk about TDP and other times they talk about power limits in general. But what is the difference? TDP, which is short for thermal design power or sometimes thermal design parameter, is a power consumption and heat output value for the GPU die itself. It's basically a number that tells you how much heat the graphics chip can dissipate and thus impacts the cooling solution. But there is much more to a graphics card than just the GPU die itself. We have the video memory, the entire electrical system, including voltage regulation, things like I.O. and of course the cooling system and possible game or RGB lighting are also using energy. That's why aside from the TDP, there are values for the power consumption of the whole graphics card. Nvidia usually uses the term total graphics power and AMD likes to call it total board power, but in general, they try to cover the same thing. A RTX 3090 Founders Edition, for example, has a total graphics power of 350 watts, while the GA102 GPU that is used by the 3090 has a thermal design power of around 230 watts. The 120 watt difference is used up by the memory, electrical components, fans, and efficiency losses. But the 3090 isn't Nvidia's most powerful GPU. The 3090 Ti has a a 100 watt higher GGP at 450 watts and that's only for the Founders Edition. Where it does start to get even more heated, pun intended, is when we take a look at the partner cards. Companies like EVGA, ASOS, MSI, Gigabyte and so on compete for the longest bar in gaming benchmarks and every little bit of extra performance on top is bought by an increasingly higher power draw. The last 1% in performance can often cost a multiple of that in power consumption. Igor's lab does some amazing power analysis and explain in detail how GPUs work in distributed power. He's a little bit like the German gamer Nexus. His testing shows that a high-end card like the MSI 3090 Ti Supreme X can draw close to 500 watts in gaming with an average of about 465 watts at 4K resolution. If you want a more detailed look, I've linked Igor's website in the description below. His articles are also available in English. The point I'm trying to make here is that even current and high-end GPUs can draw close to 500 watts of power. Yes, we are talking about the TGP for the whole card and not the TDP of the GPU alone, but that's not far from the rumored 600 watts for Nvidia's next-gen GPUs. And then there is another important aspect concerning the next-generation GPUs. I'm talking about the increased competition between AMD and Nvidia. Sometimes I even have to remind myself, but RDNA 2 was the first time in years AMD actually competed in the very high-end graphics card market. The already amazing first RDNA generation only attacked Nvidia's upper mid-range with the 5700 XT beating the RTX 2070 and forcing Nvidia to release their super card refresh. GPUs like the 2080 or 2080 Ti were never under any kind of pressure and AMD did not offer hardware ray tracing or a DLSS competition at the time. RDNA 2 did change that, the 6900 XT often beats the 3090 in resolutions up to 1440p and comes really close in 4K while offering better efficiency overall. Nvidia still has a sizable lead in ray tracing but AMD does support it now and with FSR 2.0 we finally got a true DLSS counter. With RDNA 3, AMD will most certainly try to take the gaming crown, something Nvidia doesn't want to happen. It's very likely that AMD will greatly improve their hardware ray tracing implementation too, and FSR 2.0 will only get better over time. In a nutshell, Nvidia actually has to worry about competition in the very high end this time. 
As we all know, a ultra high-end Halo product has only one goal, to take the performance grant. And it's important for Nvidia to stay on top, as they are seen as the more premium graphics brand. If Nvidia needs to crank up the power consumption of their high-end AD102 chips to 600 watts or even 800 watts, that's the price they will pay. In addition, current rumors expect the RTX 4090 to be released first. The rumored initial launch target was late August or September, and right now it seems like we will see a release in October. 4080 and 4070 are supposed to launch at a later date. But no matter when the 4090 will launch, we will also see partner cards. And as we have learned from our previous look at power consumption, partner cards can increase power draw even further. So not only does Nvidia release their flagship card first, OEM partners are already working on their designs and since Nvidia has a pretty tight grip on leaks, it's most likely that the leaked numbers we are getting are based on leaks from OEM partners, which have a tendency to be higher than the default Nvidia cards. To recap, graphics card power numbers can be based on the GPU die alone or include everything else on the PCB and even current gen high end cards are already close to 500 watts real world power draw. That's without the crazy high transient spikes that are possible. At the same time, the competition between Nvidia and AMD is heating up with AMD having a realistic shot at the performance ground this time and Nvidia is dedicated to stop that from happening. And since the rumors are saying that the 4090 will be launched first ahead of more affordable and more efficient cards, it's most likely that the leaked consumption numbers are coming from OEM partners who are working on overclock cards. With all these different aspects in mind, we can draw two conclusions. First, the numbers we are hearing, even 800 watts, are not impossible or even that unlikely. If a 3090Ti partner card can already draw 500 watts and close to 800 watts for a 4090OC model, it's not that crazy. Yes, it's a lot and I don't expect every OC model to hit these numbers in typical usage, but I wouldn't call it impossible. The second conclusion is that the official TDP and TGP numbers on Nvidia, for example for the Founders Editions, are most likely well below that. Igor expects around 600 watts total graphics power for 4090 and there seems to be a lower clocked 450 watts model too, which also could turn out to be a 4080. That also means if AMD does manage to take the performance ground initially, however slim it might be, Nvidia has to respond. I can already see it in front of my eyes, a RTX 4090 Ti Supreme Max. And maybe, just maybe, my 1000 watt GPU thumbnail will stop being pure clickbait and become the truth. But all joking aside, next gen GPUs will increase the power draw by quite a bit. Maybe not 800 watts for the Founders Edition, but 600 watts are very likely. And OC partner cards, maybe even a water cooled Special Edition, can have a much higher power ceiling. Aside from PSUs with 1000 watts or in the above becoming a lot more common, cooling such a GPU will be a difficult task, maybe even the most problematic one. The Founders Edition are rumored to get a third fan, and I guess we will see a lot of 3.5, 4 and even higher slot cards this time. I myself am a bit concerned with the high power consumption rumors, but since efficiency is also supposed to increase, it looks like next generation GPUs will offer a rather large performance lift up. Can't wait until we get actual confirmed information to find out if my expectations are in line with reality. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about the power consumption rumors. Is your PSU even ready for it? What's the highest rated card you would consider buying? And do you think we might really see a 1000 watt GPU in the near future so I can finally claim to be a leaker? Leave a comment down below. As always, if you found this video interesting, leave a like. If you didn't, there's also a dislike button and see you in the next video.